Hi, kitty cats. I am Amethysta Herrick, your hostess for Gender Identity Weekly, a weekly discussion about identity and gender from the contributors and guests of the Purple Paw Publications website, Gender Identity Today. This content is brought to you by subscribers of Gender Identity Today. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your ongoing support. Subscribers not only receive new content directly to their inboxes as soon as it publishes, but are also able to interact with every contributor directly, including me. So if you would like to support shows just like this one, as well as other podcasts, other videos, and written articles by our contributors, please consider subscribing using the links you're going to find in the show notes. Well, today, I am just honored to be talking with John C. Morley. Hi, John. Thank you for showing up. How are you, Amy? It's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm doing great. Thank you so much. John is a podcaster, a writer, I mean, all the things, engineer, member of international press, and serial entrepreneur. Now, I know John. I've listened to his content, read his articles, and John has this great message about empowerment and really taking control of your life. And I, I believe, you know, through all of my own work, this is really necessary in order to grow both personally and professionally. And so that's why I wanted to have this conversation. Very exciting to me. So let me start with the, the really kind of obvious question. Serial entrepreneur. <laughs> tell me about that. I just, well, what I love does the it mean? Term. Well, first of all, I should tell you and your guests that I'm not wanted for anything bad in any state. Right. By any, right. Okay. Uh, I'm also a first responder, but I'm not wanted for anything bad. So, what a That's business good. owner is, we all know what a business owner is. We start a business and we decide, hey, we're going to go do something crazy and start a business, right? We're going to figure out the name, get all that going. So, we get the business going and we're just trying to keep the lights on from going out, basically, and try sure. to figure all the legal compliance. Oh, I have to get insurance. I have to workman's comp. Oh, I have to get that. I have to get this. I have to do this. Like, oh my gosh. Like, I didn't know that. I have to get business cards. I have to do all this stuff. And it's like, you know it, but it's like, it all hits you at once. So a business owner is not passionate, unfortunately. They start a business because they're looking to make money, but they don't start it from a passion. When they get in for a little while and they realize that, hey, this isn't working, like, I'm passionate about what I'm doing. I need to start running the business from passion, from my heart, not from the focus on my wallet. And when that happens, two things happen. One, you start to make money because you start to love what you do. And I tell people I don't work every day. I just show up and I get checks to help people, but I don't work. And then a serial entrepreneur is someone that has done that in one business um, like I did. Uh, my IT company is 33 years young uh, this past December. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And I started when I was in college, um, but really officially when I got out. And I was helping teachers and students and all kinds of stuff. And so before I got out, one of my friends said to me, oh, John, you've got to go to a marketing company. You know, you're never going to get any business. You know, you're never going to do this. You're never going to do that. And I believed all these people. You know, I believe what they told me, John, you, you're, you're not good at writing. You're not good at this. And I just believed everybody. And Henry Ford said it right. We believe we can't. We're right. We believe we can. We're also right. Right. So I believed. And that's also why my slogan is believe me, achieve.com, because you have to believe before you can achieve. And sure. so what I said is uh, I'm going to hire this company. I won't give the name because that would be unprofessional. They're still in business ripping people off today. And about mm -hmm. 15 years ago, I said I had enough. My dad was paying for them before I even had a penny in my business account. I was paying for them, and I'm like, we're not getting anywhere, guys. Yeah, John, you have to put more money. You're in a competitive business. IT is competitive. I said, yeah, but I, I don't know if I have this money. Yeah, just don't worry about it. You just got to keep throwing money into it. it it'll, it'll come back to you. All right. So when we got to that 14, 15 years, I was like, they had to go do a brochure for me. It was a simple eight and a half by 11. Nobody really does these anymore. Uh, and it was basically sure. like a, a fold. So it was an eight and a half by 11, but really it was 11 by 17 folded. So you had like four pages is kind of how it's done. So it wasn't really uh, sure. anything staple. It was just like that. Four. So um, they couldn't proof. They couldn't print properly. Now, suppose that they owned a whole print production company. I said, well, this is great. I later found out that uh, when I called myself to make the changes, oh, John, they said, uh, you know, um, if we change the deadline, um, there's going to be a five hundred dollar uh, increase. I said, "Why? You told me um, you just told me your deadline is um, tomorrow, right? 
our deadline's tomorrow. Your deadline is today. See, we send it out. I said, so you don't print. No, no, we send it out. Sure. I said, so if I want to make a change, you got to charge me $500 so my deadline will be tomorrow, and then your deadline will be the following. He says, that's how it works. Okay. So they couldn't print, right? I like to use the expression, they couldn't print their way out of a paper bag. <laughs> sure. And I know that sounds bad, but they couldn't. They had grammar errors. Now, I was no king. I mean, I'm, I'm an A-plus speller, but I never saw myself as a writer yet. <laughs> Even though I've written some things like poems when I was in high school and stuff like that. And um, one of my poems actually got an award in school. It was comparing um, the streetlight to friendship. And it was a comparison of how there's – even though friendship is unconditional, there are conditions to have the light to work. And there are conditions to keep friendship flowing between two people. And so that worked pretty well. But my point is, is that – this wasn't going anywhere. And I said, I have to take the bull by the horns. So it was about before I graduated school, which is a while back, but things just sort of like, you know, they like percolated from like a flashback. And I said, um, you know, I don't know what they're, they're not doing a great job. And this is as I'm graduating, just about to graduate, but I wasn't ready to flip them yet. So I was head of uh, president of presidential council. And I was also VP of finance at school. So I was the guy you'd come to when you wanted money. Half the time people came sure. to me, it's because they wanted more kegs for their party. And I was like, what do you want the money for? Uh, well, we want to do something for the community. Um, what do you want? Kegs. Well, we would just want kegs. So well, how's that going to help our school community? Well, it, it'll give people a sense of belonging. Social lubricant. I, yeah, I, I mean, said, I, I don't think that's what we're looking for. Um, maybe <laughs> you should go back, uh, brainstorm, come back to me, and we'll talk. So you're not going to give us the extra 5000 No. All right, he's not going for it. Do something for the community. Do something for the people, and then we'll figure what we could do. All right. So um, I remember the next day, one of the administrators says, hey, John, are you going to be around this weekend? Because our school was like a suitcase school. They'd go home, and I was also managing my parents' business when I was only a freshman and sophomore in college. Wow. Okay. My mom had a dry clean plant. They sold it in 2004. They asked me if I wanted it. I didn't want it. But long story short – uh, I said, oh, I'm going to, I'll stay this weekend. So my parents look, I got to stay. They want me to be at this event uh, at the Lincoln theater. I said, okay, I'll be there. I said, John, it's real simple. We just need you to give two checks to this guy. Said, okay. I said, I have to prove it. It's just $40,000. Just two checks, 20,000 each. I said, 40,000. Yes. How long is he going to be here? Uh, 90 minutes. I said, 40,000 for 90 minutes. He's really good. He's an entertainer. What's oh his gosh. name? So don't worry about it. It's all approved. You just have to hand the checks. So I decided to do a little research because I want to know why I'm paying forty thousand like, dollars. Oh don't gosh, worry, you know yeah. it comes out of the student's budget. Like it's you know it's all approved. So don't worry about it. So I did some research and I found out that this guy was a little bit of a schmuck because he basically embarrasses people and um, he squeezes a lemon. They all come on stage and they fall asleep. So I now knew what he was. He was a stage hypnotist. I said. Uh, to the gentleman when I met him, I called him doctor. I think that was what I was supposed to call him. He really wasn't a formal doctor. And okay. uh, I said, doctor, such as I said, uh, I did my homework on you. He said, oh, yeah? I said, yes. I said, although it's a privilege and pleasure to meet you, I want to let you know that I've done my homework on you. And let me be very clear. You're not to embarrass the front row or me or any administration here. I don't care what you do with the rest of the theater. You can do anything you want. See this first check? If you do, it will bounce so high, you will not even see it leave the atmosphere. Oh, and if that's a problem, don't even stand around for the rest of the show because I'm not giving you the second check. Oh, what if money doesn't bother you because I know you have so much of it. I know. I'm friends with the Harvard, with the Yale, and all of the circuits for the colleges, like the 400 other colleges you're supposed to be touring, I know, that you're going to. Well, don't be surprised if a week before each one, they call and tell you that they have to cancel, not reschedule. And they're going to ask how for their. How old were you? How What's old that? were you when this was? How old were you when this was happening? So I was going to be a saw a, senior, a junior or senior in college. I mean, that's that's a lot of um, ambition. I'm trying so to come up with a way of saying that. But. And I got very intrigued with what he was doing. Sure. And I bought his book. Okay. They were on cassettes at the time. I took the Silva method. Um, then it kind of stayed dormant for a while. 
And so when I started having these challenges with what was happening seven years or so, I said, I'm going to go back and get my degree in clinical hypnosis, psychology, neurolinguistic programming. Let me go do this. I said, let me start okay. creating a new belief. I did. I said, I need to stop listening to people and listen to myself. Oh, I so see. I need to get okay. rid of these people because they're not I good see. for me. And so I said, but how do I get rid of them? I've been married to them for years. Like, how do I divorce from them? It's like impossible. I said, I don't even know what I'm doing. So I called Xerox up, who happened to be, um, who we're a customer of. When I started the IT company, I bought the top of the line copier from them. Sure. And uh, they said, um, come on down, you know, we'll take you to breakfast and lunch. And so I come out there and the guy said, what's it going to take for me to become a mom pop print shop? He said, John, it's so simple. I said, well, how do I do it? He said, only 150. I reached into my pocket. I was so proud. I took out $150 in crisp bills and I gave it to him. And he's like, um, no, 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 not $150, 150000 Oh, well, I need to talk to my bank. <laughs> I'll get back to you. On that. Sure. I talked to my bank the next day. Figuring my bank's going to say no. My bank said, so when do you want the money? Oh, my gosh. And I said to myself, oh, boy. I thought banks are supposed to say no when you're doing crazy things. We think it's a great idea. So um, I got the 150000 They said, when do you want it? But I decided to do my first serial entrepreneur move. And what that means is, you're solving a problem for one business or someone else's businesses by starting another business when you're already in business. So I own an okay. IT and tech company. I'm an engineer. And I said, gee, people don't know how to market. People don't know how to print. People don't know how to create good quality content. Maybe I should go start a marketing toy. But let me start as a small printer first. Let me just start sure. and get my feet wet. I so uh, I said, guys, I said, <clears throat> I have some bad news. Good news and bad news. What do you want to hear first? Well, the good news is I got the loan. Oh, the bad news is I didn't get as much as you were expecting because my credit wasn't as good as we were both hoping. Oh, well, how much did you get? Unfortunately, I only got 130000 And it's like, oh, yes. Yeah, so, so do me a favor. What do I owe you for the, you know, like the breakfast and, and the lunch? She said, let me just pay you for it. I said, because it's obvious I'm not going to be a customer and I can't afford this machine. I said, well, what do I owe you for the lunch? He's like not listening to me. And he goes off to another and first asks if I want coffee or I want this. They always want to know if you want something. Then they go of off like the car salesman, goes over there, and he says uh, – comes back. He goes, Mr. Morley, you are in luck today. <laughs> I said, how am I in luck? I am 20000 short. Well, on the contrary, yes. But what I didn't know is that they got a special happening next week. On Monday, I can't – I'm not even supposed to tell you about it today, but my boss says I could tell you about it. So it's only $150,000, and you're going to get the $20,000 rebate on paper, so it'll be hundred thirty dollars all in. So now I'm like, well, um, I need to come and like sleep on this. This is, this is a lot for me. No, 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 sure, sure. Um, tomorrow's Saturday. I said, I'll get back to you sometime on Monday. So I slept on it. I said, you know what? I need to make another concession offer, and I know they're going to do it. I said, I can't take the machine because technically I can't afford the training. Oh. Okay. So uh, he, I go back to the guy in the afternoon, like one o'clock. They were like just rushing around. Can we get you something? Do you want something to eat? Do you want pizza? you want soda? I said, I don't drink soda. Oh, you want water? Sure. You, you, you want cake? You want, I said, I don't want anything. Okay. So um, well, what did you decide? Because well, you're probably um, in Rochester. I right? decided that I would like to go with you. Unfortunately – I'm not going to be able to. You're not. Why? See, to be very honest with you, I'm really buying this at the edge of my teeth. And I can't really afford this. This is really tight for me. Oh. And I got to thinking, even though you're going to give me this amount that I'm getting exactly the amount, I'm going to be crunched right to the wire. I don't have any, I don't have the ten dollars or $15,000 for the training. He says, oh, that is a problem. I said, yeah, so, so again, what do I owe you for the lunch? And they're like, I just want to pay you back. And I knew he wasn't going to take my money, but I was it's reaching so my course. wallet. He's going over there. I said, was it like 150 with the lunch and the steak dinner? Like, what do I owe you? Like, I'm taking still the money. I'm showing. Sure. You know, they just put it. He's like, hang on. You, 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 want, you want biscuits? You want donuts? You know, Carrie made fresh pudding. I was like, I'm good. I'm good. He's like, Are you, you want hot cocoa? I said, I'm good. 
just water, just there's fruit. I'm good. Goes over to the guy. He scurries back. He goes, Mr. Morley. He says, I forgot to tell you last week. This was my fault. The $130,000 offer includes 40 hours of free training. Training. I can't believe it. (laughs) So I had to ponder this for a minute, but I already knew this was going to happen. I knew that this was going to like happen. They were going to let me walk away. And so, uh, I said, I need to think about this for a minute. Oh, okay. You want, I said, just, just, just give me a minute. So, uh, they're all like, you know, just in the room. Like, so I get up from my chair. As soon as I get up from my chair, they all like five of them walk over to me. And, um, I'm not gonna be able to take delivery of the unit probably until January. Cause you know, it's getting close to Christmas. Oh, and I know you want it on your books for December. So that's a problem for me. I need to make it happen in January. Uh, all right, we can do that. And so the machine gets delivered first week of January. They start doing the training. Two weeks after that, I decide to um, go to this large marketing advertising company. And I knock on the door early in the morning, and I'll just call the guy Brian. That's not his name. Hey, Brian. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, I just want to say thank you because we had a great run, and we're done. Oh, well, well, you know, John, it's a little early in the morning. It's like 730 and I didn't quite wake up. You know, I still have, I didn't have my coffee yet. Well, let me, let me, um, let me get Chris, you get Chris, your salesman. Hang on a second here. Gets Chris. Do you want donuts? You want coffee? You want something? You know, like, I said, I'm good. So he brings Chris in. Chris comes in. I said, Hey, John, how are you? I said, I'm great. Um, I said, I just want to say thank you because we had an amazing run and we're done. Oh, we're done with the project. Yes. Oh, okay. What's the new project? Well, we're done. Right. And, and, and what's the new project? So uh, he says to me, well, you know, John, he says, you know, we spent the last couple of days all night not getting sleep. You know, myself, Tina, Krista, Joey, Bobby, Mark, uh, Raphael, Paul, uh, Sarah. Uh, there were a lot of names. And I said, we have a multi-millionaire idea that we want to show you. We can't wait to show you that we know is going to take Jay Moore to multi-billions. Would you like to see it? No. No. Maybe you're not listening to me. I think you hear me, but I don't think you're processing what I'm saying. I said, thank you. We had a great run, and we're done. Right, with the project. No. We're completely done. I fired your boss. I'm firing you. I'm firing the whole company right now. Because back he goes... Want coffee or something? No, I don't like that. <laughs> we had a really great run. We're done. Sure. And he says, uh, he says, so you're really firing us. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to give you a discount. Oh. I like you. We're going to give you 30% off on all of your new work coming in. I said, no. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm probably going to get fired for this. <laughs> we're going to give you a 50% discount on all of your new work coming in, and I'm going to give you a 20% rebate on all the work you spent in the last years with us. To be used toward that. I, I said, no. I said, you, you're fired. He goes, you know, John, that, that's below the belt. I said, no. What's below the belt is taking my father's money and my money for multiple years, lying to us, not knowing or having a clue what you're doing, and acting unprofessionally. That's what's below the belt, my friend. Sure. So he says, um, well, where are you going to go? You're not going to go to the guy across the street. He's horrible. Their quality is so terrible. No, we're not going to the guy across the street. Oh, the guy across town, I heard he actually steals, and his quality is not good either, and you don't want to go there, and his his machine's always breaking down. We're not going to the guy across town. Oh, you're probably going to go to the guy on the other side of the bridge. Who's that? Uh, that that's Michael. I said, I don't know. You see, Michael, he's a nice guy, but trust me, he doesn't know what he's doing, and he's going to promise you everything, and he's never going to deliver. And, and he delivers terrible work. We're not going to go to Michael either. Well, who are you going to go to? There's a new firm opening up in town. Really where? Uh, just across the street from me. Uh, well, I don't know about that company. Well, they haven't opened yet. Oh, well, um, what's the name of the company? So I told him the name of the company, um, Orbital Media. And he's like, um, yeah, there's some fly by night. They'll be out of business in less than six months. 
So he goes, who's the owner there? And I put my hand over my mouth. I'm like, John Morley. And I say my name. like And he's like, can you take your hand? I said, yeah. I said, who's the owner? He's like, John Morley. He's like, oh, bro. He's like, I admire you. But look, and you're swimming with the big fish. And you're just not ready to swim with them. And we want to protect course. you. You're really like, you're not meant for this market. You're not meant for this ocean. And so I built a print production center. Um, two, first two years, I failed. Mm. And I produced all kinds of content. But answering your question, as a serial entrepreneur creates another business to solve a challenge. So you might be, let's say, uh, you could be a teacher. But maybe you decide that while you're teaching, there might be a, um, a book you want to create or a learning method. You create another company teaching people how to learn math. That would be your serial entrepreneur venture. But working for a company doesn't make you an entrepreneur. Owning your own company, there's a difference. When you work for a company, they treat you like garbage half the time. Sure. And sure. so when I have people work for me, I respect them. I treat them well as if it was their own because I want them to understand that we're all going to grow together. And that's what I always foster. Um, it's really about truth. It's about integrity. So I became a member of the international press about seven years ago. I submitted some work to them and they were like, they first time they, I submitted it, they didn't get back to me. Two weeks later, they called me and says, oh, Mr. Morley, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to accept you for about two weeks, but we think your content is of a high quality and we'd like to induct you into the, so, okay. They gave me a small bill for $34. Or I paid that, but they inducted me in. And uh, this year, this October marked the seventh. So I'm seven years and some months from this past October. And so um, that was a big milestone. And people would say to me, hey, John, you know, it's great that you do all this. You do video. You do all this great stuff. I said, so one guy said to me, hey, John, um, I want you to just change the press release you do. I said, what's wrong? He says, I want you to put down um, we're the best. I said, what? We're, we are the best or we're the best. So where are we getting that data from? Oh, from me, from my mom, from my dad, from my brother, my sister, my girlfriend, my wherever. I was like, I, 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 I can't do that. Oh, it's really simple. Like, you know, you just give me the file, I'll edit. I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. Oh, I get it. You want more money. You want 100, you want 200, 300, 400, 500. And he kept insulting me up to 1,000. Then he went up to, and I said, no, 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 up to like 10 times. And he's like, oh, I get it. You want like five or 10,000. Oh, you want 50,000. I said, no, 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 you don't get it. I can't be bought. You see, I'm about creating stories that are about the core of integrity. So if you're looking for something like that, you probably want to look for someone else because I'll sure. find your story and I'll write about it or I'll write about the story that you have, but I'm going to validate all the information before I put the information out. Oh, you're one of those whack jobs. <laughs> well, I just take media very seriously and I want to deliver the truth to the best of my ability. Like I said, you're nuts. No, I just feel that too many people in the world lie about things, and I want to give people the truth. Yeah. Can, can I – I want it because the fuel for all of this, speaking with the, the hypnotist the way you did uh, the negotiation with Xerox, the the firing the, manage, uh, the marketing company, I mean all of this, the fuel was – your belief in yourself, I mean, in yes. the integrity, sorry. I, yeah, yeah, that, that's true. That. That, 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 I, yeah. mean, <laughs> I mean, it's stunning. I mean, because the, the story, because nobody does this, I guess is my point. Nobody does this. Everybody I wrote an article. Xerox. I wrote an article. Um, BelieveMeAchieve.com. It says John C. Moore's recent articles. And true story. So I'm on a lot of different casts I get invited to. So there was cool. one uh, – large marketing advertising agency was going to have me on. She read the paper and she says, um, you're not the type of element we want on our show. So that meant to me, they charge a lot of money and that they don't <laughs> care about the customer. So she just said, we're not a match. So we've decided sure. to cancel the interview. Okay. Which that can happen. But I thought it was funny because, you know, she's like, I think you'd be great. She says, but our, our executive team doesn't think you're going to be a match for our brand. <laughs> be, because of, I mean, too much integrity? That seems... I think because I tell the truth about what to look for, how to know if a company's BSing you. And one of the things I tell yeah. people is, and they and it tells it in the story, is I, I didn't tell you the reason why I decided that they were really bad. I told you the, the one reason about the printing. You know a company's pulling your leg 
when they take you out to breakfast, lunch, or dinner based on your deposit. Now, let me give you an example. So I'm going to use the numbers 100, 500, 1,000. Those might not be the numbers. Okay. So when I wrote them a check for $100, they would take me out for um, Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> and juice. When I wrote sure. a check for 500, we're going to go to Bennigan's for burgers and, and, and uh, ice cream. When I run my check for $1,000, they're going to take me out to Ruth Chris for steak and a sure. succulent dessert. So I decided to test this one time. And uh, I called the office of Chris, also Marty, whatever his name was. And uh, I called them up and I said, hi, uh, uh, I think your name was Susan. I say, Susan, just calling to let you know I'm mailing a check. Oh, thank you, Mr. Morley. Uh, I'm mailing a check for $100. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll get back to you. I know we're going to probably schedule a Dunkin' Donut. Uh, so like, yeah, yeah, we'll probably do a Dunkin' Donut. fine. So um, they get the check. Three or four days later, she goes, oh, um, John, this is Susan from such a lady's office. I said, yes. She says, um, I'm calling you because I don't know if you know this, but Chris and Katie, um, you know, they're a couple and they're married and they have twins, Brian and Paul. And I was like, okay. Uh, sure. I don't know if you know this. Um, and uh, they are both teething at the moment. I still don't know how this affects me. Like, I don't get right. this. I don't know if you know this either, but Katie was in a fender bender last week. So Chris needs to come and drive her because they have a doctor's appointment for both the twins. And the appointment is at 8 o'clock, the same time your breakfast is scheduled. I said, oh, well, we'll just do lunch. It's fine. Well, we can't because corporate's coming in to do um, their annual audit with us. So he has to be around for that. I said, all right. I said, just another day. No, I got you in for the last appointment at 1030 at Ruth Chris. Um, and this way you guys can, you know, go over things personally and it'll be a great evening. Sure. <laughs> and that was on the hundred dollar one. <laughs> so I gave the hundred. I sent him a thousand. I told oh. him I was sending a hundred, but I mailed a thousand. You're oh, come on. <laughs> I said I was mailing a hundred. Sure. They book the Dunkin' Donuts. They're just confirming the time. But then they call back because of the whole thing with the doctor and the whole nonsense thing there. Sure. Uh, I did another time. I did something else, and I tried a couple ways, and it worked the same way. I told her I was sending 1000 She's Oh, she says, he's got a late flight. The only time we can probably get you in is in the morning because in the afternoon, he's swamped with clients. So we're just going to sure. probably do a quick thing at Arnie's Deli in the morning. You can't make that up. No, I can't. See, I was, you had me strung. And then by the end of it, I went, wait a minute. So then how'd you end up at the, the steakhouse? I cannot believe it. That's yeah, I hilarious. Know. <laughs> so, but so that I've proved gotta, my point that, yes. you know, I'm saying that, that they were all about the money. Right, right. And not about integrity or doing the right thing. Yep. And when I called somebody on the carpet about that, he said, John, he goes, he goes, that's just how he says, it's, it's not really that way. It's just, you know, just how the schedule worked out. I said, well, why is it every time I do it? Cause I've did a couple of times and it seems about, well, you're, you're probably just being, you know, you're probably just, you know, being too sensitive. We don't, sure. we don't do things like that. It's a coincidence. Happened three times. Three, three and, coincidences. you know, um, then they come back to me after the two years. And uh, Chris goes back and says, oh, John, he says, uh, you know, listen, uh, we want to help you out. I know you've been in business for a little while. We want to help you out with your business. Said, okay. He says, um, we want to take some of your clients from you. You know, you can keep your name on it. We'll do the work. And, okay. you know, you can have a little break because we know how to handle these, you know, these big clients. And um, I said, okay. I said, I, I, Chris, I got a better idea. I said, why don't we take some of your clients, the ones you know that you haven't given ROI yet, the ones that either are suing you, you still haven't know they haven't left you yet, and you've kind of like had them losing their shirt. And maybe we can give them a true ROI, and then they may actually want to renew and do business with you. He just kind of sunk, and he's like, um, well, um, that's not in my jurisdiction. I can't make the decision. I said, you know, Chris, I kind of had a feeling you were going to say that. And so you're supposed to be going to lunch with me. You're not going to lunch with me. When you can make those kinds of decisions, then you can take me to lunch. How about that, sir? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Did, John, you have a – I love these stories. And I know that, the, that there's a good story. There's a, a quote that you gave me uh, 
um, or a quote that I saw in a bio that says, you don't set goals in life. No. That you make promises and you ensure they yeah, come to so, fruition. So goals are something – I stopped doing goals a few years ago. Okay. The reason is whether you play sports or not, right? Um, people say, oh, gee, I'm going to make the goal. I'm going to hit the goal, whether it's soccer or whether it's uh, whatever, right? Or you make a goal in life that maybe you want to do something, right? You want to achieve sure. something. But what happens when it doesn't happen? Oh, you know what? It was just a goal. I'll set another one. It's only a goal. I see. So, so the- I make promises to myself. To yourself, okay. Yes. And my team. Okay, so you make it uh, public as well, okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you notice, a lot of my stuff I do, I put not everything, but I put some on social media saying, hey, all right, guys, here's my promise to you guys. My promise is, you know I have all these shows. I have John C. Morley behind the, behind the mic with John C. Morley on Saturday nights. I have Inspirations for Your Life every single night. I have Jay Moore Tech Talk every Friday. And I produce all this other content that we put out, John the Science Guy, and all these short reels every day. Here's my promise to you guys. For my shows, my tech show, my motivational show, I promise, I don't know what time I'll be on. I can't give you an exact time because I'm busy. But it will be on before my head hits the pillow. Could be 12 o'clock. Could be 1 o'clock. I was going to see my parents. I think it was for the holidays, Christmas. And I was getting in late. And uh, we got there around a couple days before Christmas. And I got in about 1230. She said, oh, John, you're just going to go to sleep. I said, not really. I said, I got to do a show. A show? I said, yeah. I said, I I have a show to do. And if it's 15 minutes, I got to do a show and then I'll go to bed. I said, hey, guys, it's John C. Morley here, serial entrepreneur. You know I'm here in Naples, Florida. I just got off the plane. Sorry if I look a little tired. But you know my promise to you. I promise to get my show out to you before my head, head hits the pillow. So here it is. And here it is. And that that's, that's what I do. I I, um, I do that. My next thing we're working on right now is obviously we're trying to monetize the show. But we're sure. working on getting the show to become sometimes traveling. So we want to become a traveling show based on integrity where we can just show up there. I'm not really looking to edit it. I'm looking to do a live show. Sure. And um, so my thing is I do the video. As long as it's clean, everything's good. Then 24 hours later, it goes to the audio version of it. And um, it, it works out pretty well. Uh, but I would like to be in malls and a few other places. I feel that a lot of people know what we do. But a lot of people, unfortunately, it's not nice to say this, they're selfish. And Absolutely. they're only caring about themselves. And, and, and I'm going to share a, a quick story with Al, Al and all the details. So we had a challenge that came to us. We always have challenges, right? Regardless what age. We're in. So we built this sure. beautiful place that we had. Beautiful place. We plan to be there five more years. Okay. Well, we get a notice in August uh, telling us he's going to triple our rent. So, um, triple. Yeah. So I, um, I, uh, I don't respond back. I get an email sure. and he says, Mr. Morley, a, a lady says to me, um, we noticed you haven't renewed yet. I said, well, you've noticed correctly. Okay. Well, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're almost, you're out of your, your window. We're going to give you another day to make a decision. I said, well, I don't really know if I want to stay. So why not? I said, well, first of all, tripling the rent and the way you people have been treating me, I don't know if I want to be in this negative energy. I said, sure. I may want to be here another month or two till my new place is ready. She says, Mr. Morley, let me be very clear to you. You have no options. You can stay or you can get out. I said, you know what? You've made my decision so crystal clear. I'm going to leave. Going to leave. Okay, yeah. then. And so we had a challenge that hit us. We had nowhere to go with our business. So for the next three months, we're now looking for a new business home because they threw us out. Oh, so gosh. we went to a very small office. We had several thousand square feet, and we went down to a 300-square-foot office just so we could have a few of our employees there. Sure. And we are going through a challenge right now to find a new space that will accommodate us. So we had to put everything in storage. So our production company pretty much has to go out of business for a few months. Oh, gosh. And the people that we're working with don't care. Really? The, the, the landlord doesn't care. Because these – well, so now I'm curious though because you made promises mm-hmm. to customers. Yeah, so, so, so promises are all delivered. They're all delivered, but I can't take anything new. So I have sure. the last couple jobs I've got to finish. 
and so you, I mean, you are, you're going to make good on all the promises. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We only have a Without couple more to an, finish. We're, we're almost done. We have wow. a couple, we have two more to orders to deliver and we're done. Yeah. Holy but, cats. uh, so what I want to tell you is that challenges hit us no matter what point. Of course. And so we have to be resilient. We have to be ready for these challenges. But I look at it in a good way that uh, being religious, I look at it in a way that, you know, what we get will either be what we want or something better. So, you know, it, it's a – people don't realize when you leave either a home or a business, it's very emotional, especially when you built that, when you oh, had sure. it designed, you did the plans. And then just to be taking it apart is like very hard. Yes. And I remember telling her, this lady – because it was the other day we were parking, and uh, this is how ruthless they are. They're terrible people. We were parking outside, and I came back to the car, and um, it was like I was in school. And they were saying, oh, you know, you're in trouble. They put a big orange sticker on my car. I said, what's this? Is I don't know. She's like, looks like you're in trouble. I look at the sticker. It says you have illegally parked. Park again like this, and you'll be towed at your expense. Oh, boy. So I took that piece of paper smiling up to the camera and I ripped it up. Sure. And I said to them, do that again. I'll call the police. You're harassing me. Yeah. So this is come to a point where they are not being great and we're going through a challenge. So people think that, you know, once you're over a challenge, you're never gonna have another challenge. You're going to have more challenges in life. It's of not course. that we're going to get them. It's how we choose to respond. But you know the thing that was really hard, and the thing that was really hard with all this is that we didn't get one bit of support from our own town that we needed to leave. Wow. Not one bit of support. Huh. So it makes me think, you know, we do a lot of good things for people. Everybody was all too busy to help us. Sure. And so it makes you kind of ponder. It makes you sort of think. Um, but you know, we'll rise above the ashes on this. The Phoenix will rise above the ashes. We know of that. Of course. Uh, but when you're in the ashes, it seems a little challenging, but it is that belief. It is that, that knowingness that I know this is just a, a pit stop along the way. Yeah. Do you know, though, I mean, I started going down this path when just before we started recording, I mean, most of the people I talk to, most of the people I work with, in fact, most of the people who, who would read what it is I have to write are in the LGBTQ community. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there are some people not particularly enthusiastic about that community. And so it's difficult to find this belief in yourself. How do, I mean, how did you do that? You mentioned the hypnosis, but... There's got to so, be more to it. I manifested my first car out of college by using a technique. Okay. A technique of putting that car on my laptop, on my iPhone, and seeing, heal it, hearing, and feeling that car. I remember getting out of college, not having a pay to buy that car. <sighs> went over to a kid that was probably a couple years older than me, and he was okay. not going to waste his time with me. So I went over to the man. I was walking out, and the manager says, uh, can we help you, sir? I said, well, I want to test drive the car and use the nav, he, but the sales rep says you don't do that. Well, of course we do that. Who's your rep? I said, the guy over there at the end saying, well, come on back. So he says, he wants it. yeah, we, we don't do all that. He said, but he's not buying today. He said, I don't care if he's not buying today. If he wants to test drive a car, let him test drive the car. Sure. So they let me test drive the car. I come back, and uh, as I test drive it, I smelled the car. I took pictures of the car. I felt the car. And every night I took a proverbial drive in my new car. And that car was in my driveway in six months. It's, Neville Goddard says you've got to live the feeling of the wish fulfilled. That's it. And I think a lot of people, you got a couple people. You got people that are jealous. You got people that don't understand you, as we talked about before. They don't understand why you're doing something. And I always said this, and we have a, we have a couple of strict policies. One is we don't discriminate for race, religion, sexual orientation, creed, color. And if anybody does, political party, et cetera, we have a three uh, warning system. First one, and we actually had to just fire a client because of this about last year. A oh. customer was on the phone, and um, they cursed at me. And I let them know. Um, I said, we'll help you with your thing today, but just want to let you know it's a verbal warning. If it happens again, 
It'll be a written warning. If it happens a third time, okay, um, we will um, we will uh, discontinue your services and we will say goodbye. Sure. So I told them we don't tolerate this from anybody, yada, yada, anybody in the company. So third time I'm on the phone and he's very nice to me. And this lady's cursing me out with the F word and all kinds of things. And I helped them out. And I said, now that we've helped you, is everything working fine? Everything's working fine. Great. Um, now we're going to say goodbye. What's the matter? I warned you. Your, your owner has a big mouth and she can't control it. And unfortunately, we can't work with people like that. I'm so sorry. So I think it's sticking to your integrity uh, that yeah. you're going to do stuff like that. That's not an easy thing to do. So no. you just have to realize there's there's no going back on that. And I always said uh, that, you know, that you can do whatever you want. You can have whatever you want. As long as you don't discriminate, as long as you don't harm or hurt another person physically, mentally, emotionally, you can do or have whatever you want. But you don't have the right to harm or hurt another one. And no one has the right to make you feel inferior about yourself except for one person, you. Yourself. Right. But that's – I think that's the most – I think that's the person who does it the most. You do it yourself, but what happens is you do it yourself, but you, you let someone else make you feel that way. So when a situation happens – you're allowing them to cause you to feel that way. I no see. one has the right. To, so you do, let's say, uh, accept it. The fact that you don't negate it, you allow it. I don't think we every day go criticizing ourselves. But when someone says, oh, you know, you're no good at this. You're no good at that. Look what people did to me with my writing. I've sure. now written over 400,000 words. And I have a book on the way. And people... You know, don't care. I now started something called John's um, Weekly uh, Quotes, and I instigated this because of these wonderful landlord people. And I put in the quote to this week's quote was um, help someone out even if they can't help you. And I said to them something very interesting. So I lost my grandparents at a, my, my grandfather at a very young age mm -hmm. when I was uh, in third or fourth grade on Thanksgiving. My father's father uh, died Thanksgiving uh, night. And uh, without to go all the details, but anyway, um, so I lost that one. And then I also lost my other grandfather probably in my sophomore or junior year. They both died of cancer. The one died of cancer because he was smoking, smoking, smoking. And he stopped before I was born six months, but the damage was done. And the other one had some other type of cancer of the intestine or something. And so I said to this lady, I was talking to, I said, you know, I said, you people are horrible people. I said, you know, and I've had challenging times in my life. And you know what the most challenging time in my life was? When my two, uh, the worst time was when my two grandparents died right after each other, not too far after each other. I said, I'd like to say congratulations to you because now you're the worst moment in my life. She didn't know what to say. I wouldn't either. <laughs> How do you reply to that? I, I, I'm courteous to people, but I come out with the truth. You may not want to hear what I have to say, sure. but I'm going to come out with the truth. I, can I circle back to something? Absolutely. Because you mentioned – you mentioned that, that we, we, allow, we allow certain treatment to occur. Did, am I saying yes. that – well yes, enough. yes, so, yes. So what about what about legislation? I mean, there, there's plenty of legislation even still being enacted, like today. Well, maybe not today, today, but you get. You know, there's, there's, no, there's Sunday, still a lot. But, there's still a lot yes. happening. There's lots of different things, but we've made a lot of strides. We have. Oh, for sure. Well, but for what it's worth, I mean, and and I'm not saying you're wrong i'm saying you know if you if you look at places like tennessee you look at places like florida there are anti-transgender i mean ohio actually just had a huge um a bunch of yep. law that went through so what how do we how do we handle that because i mean that's that's not something that's something imposed ultimately yeah, not I, accepted. I think 
what we have to realize is that there's always going to be certain rules in certain areas. We, we get that, right? Just sure. like in business, um, there's something to be proud, but then there's something to be, I'm going to call it um, quiet or I'm going to be you know, not broadcasting. There's a difference sure. between being proud and then you know, broadcasting and then what that could do is have ramifications. And those ramifications could be from people that could want to harm you. Um, they could want to cause damage to your business or things like that. So yeah. you have to act smart. And I think that's a big challenge. And it's hard to know who you can trust. Oh, so I think true. that's something that you have to just feel your way. Um, I just finished taking a certification, which you might know. I just got my heart math certification from Heart Math International just a few weeks ago. Oh, okay. Ago. Yeah. Um, and uh, the whole concept that the heart basically has not one connection to our brain, but five connections for every one that it has to our brain. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people, they're programmed to respond in a certain way, but they don't necessarily know why they respond that way. Like, I don't know, maybe you like chocolate. I like chocolate too. But maybe you put chocolate in front of you and it changes you, right? Like so much. Uh, or maybe you have mangoes. Like for every reason, oh, you don't want mangoes. or man like It could be whatever it is. It causes a, a state, a reaction. So... These programs, what we call engrams, which is from Dianetics from many, many years ago, they get stored in our brain when we're unconscious or when there's a situation when our brain is kind of like not in the conscious mood. So sure. when we go into, which I won't get too deep in this, alpha, beta, theta, uh, when we go into the alpha level, um, you know, and, and going down as far as like, uh, you know, theta, where you can do some healing and stuff like that, uh, we have the ability to connect our consciousness to the rest of the world. I believe our consciousness is connected to the world. I believe thought Agreed. is connected to the world. Yes, I agree. And um, a perfect example, the other day I wanted somebody to call me back. And I went to my, just did my meditation, closed my eyes. You don't have to close your eyes, but I closed my eyes. And I just thought about this person. And I thought about them picking up the phone and calling me. Sure. Then I said, there's someone else I want to call me. So I'm like, hey, uh, haven't heard from you in a while. What's the status of this? And it was a business deal. Uh, just wondering, um, give me a call back. I know we want to proceed. Just want to confirm the time and the check and everything. So the next day, I got both phone calls. Uh, of course. Yes. One call came from um, this one person, and um, he had apologized to me. He said, John, he says, I apologize. He says, I've been really busy. I said, I understand. It's no big deal. So no, no, no. He said, I didn't forget about you. Said, no, no problem. He said, but listen, I do want to place an order with you. Okay. And then another person called me. He says, oh, John, he says, you know, we're having some red tape. It was a school. We're having some red tape issues. I need you to talk to our business office because they're having some issues on how it's getting billed. Okay. And, um, but I got the call. Uh, there's another one I'm working on right now for another call from somebody. Um, but the thing is this, you put it out there and the thing is it won't always happen immediately because they have to be on the same frequency as you. Sure. If they're not on that frequency, then it's not going to connect. That makes and sense. And you've got to believe it. You, you've got to believe it. And my big thing is you got to give gratitude. But to answer your question, you know, there's always people, you know, pointing fingers or saying things. And I think you're going to get that at any age or, or any any kind of discipline. You know, we were in school. You get people calling us for this or calling you for that or all kinds of things. So I don't think it's changed much as you get older, but I think it's got different. I think it's changed from being more of a playfulness, like, you know, like a, I don't want to play with you type of thing to – something more that I've got to have a power over you. Right. And so uh, to give you an example, this, this uh, thing, the hardest part of this whole thing with us moving out is I was thinking they're going to bring another tenant in there, which would be great, right? They're not. They're no, going to knock all the walls you. down. They're oh, going to knock all the walls really? down inside, keep the outside walls up, and they're going to make an extension of their filing room so it could be an ego filing room. Okay, sure. 
No, that's just what they do. They take over things because they can. And so people get so hung up. And and I come right off to tell the last, you know, I said, I said, you work for a horrible company. You know, I'm going to tell you that. And I said, your boss is horrible. And I said to her one time, I said, you know, I said, no, karma is a funny thing. I said, it will come back at you. She comes back sending me a message. She says, you better not. I said, I'm not doing anything. She says, we will take legal action. I said, I'm just letting you know about the universe. Oh, sure. You better not do anything. I'm just letting you know that someday, somewhere, what I've taught you here today, you may not be willing to admit and accept, but I guarantee you this lesson will keep playing over again and again until you and your boss learn it. Yes. That's how the universe works. Yes, absolutely. And they told me that I'm nuts. So you're going to get people like this. So if you get people that are mean or that are going to be discourteous, um, I had one to share some of the details on it um, where I was going through, um, let, let's call it a slight legal battle. And the legal battle okay. was brought against me because of something I didn't do, but something they thought I did. All right. And because somebody was not okay with themselves and how they handle things, they figure, well, let's just bring the court against you because that'll make you go away. Sure, I see. And so the challenge with that is people in our world can't accept where they are, regardless of what that is, personally in business. And they blame where they are on somebody else. Where I am right now, even though I had some challenges, it's nobody's fault. Even though I got this gentleman that caused some hearts, it's still my responsibility to, you know, I should have figured a way out of this better. I started a year ago, but it's my fault that I didn't find something. You know what I'm saying? So I take responsibility. Yeah. I take accountability. That's that's impressive. Because you know, that's another I, and thing I know that's that missing. I've got to do, I've got to um, stock the logs. I got to do what I need to do to make the next step because nobody's going to do it for me. Uh, agreed. Okay. Agreed. And so when you understand that you show up in this world, which is great, but when somebody nitpicks you or somebody calls you this or calls your names and in this specific situation without getting detailed, um, they couldn't handle who they were, who they or as a person. And we're trying to push that off on me that it was I my see. fault. Sure. But nothing was my fault. And what I'll leave you with a very interesting thing at the end is I knew the person's father very well. Very nice gentleman. And we were in that court so many times. So because they had painted something that the state was coming after, that was this bad character, supposedly. Okay. Once they saw I put a counterclaim, which no one says I could do, the state dropped out. The state said, we're not interested in this. This is a, this is a petty, this is a petty, this is, we're not interested in this. Yeah. And the other person was really pissed off. Well, I thought you people were supposed to take care of, I thought you were supposed to like get rid of them. Like, well, he filed a countersuit. Well, how come you let him do that? It's a free country. Sure. And then I fired my attorney because he didn't do that. (laughs) I took pre, I took, I took pre law and I decided I couldn't lie to people for a living. (laughs) I get that. So so what happened in a situation when this whole thing ended, I went to his father and I shook his hand and he says, he says, John, he says, I want to just tell you, I apologize to the bottom of my heart for any pain or anguish that uh, my family or my son has caused you because oh, wow. I can see you're a very nice gentleman. And I'm just going to tell you, he does anything like this again, I'll disown him. Because oh, this, was, this was so wrong on so many levels that I don't even know where to begin. So some people think that by bringing the court in or by doing something and not taking accountability, okay, um, our big bad wolf over here tries to do the same thing. He called the, he tried to put a false claim into the cops telling them when I knocked on their door to have them come over for a sound violation that I had grabbed the secretary inappropriately oh my gosh and i reached back out and he says well it's hearsay so whatever you say I said I said, this is all nonsense well we have 10 attorneys you have none who's gonna win i said well this is unfair you're threatening me yeah so i went to the police department i filed a report they said john they said nobody likes this guy and he is hated 
all over, and nobody's going to come after you. Nobody even nobody's going to do anything to you. The fact this has got so much nonsense over it, it's a waste of our time. And you don't realize like situations, but you know, I always say to people that you want to be nice to everybody. If people are nasty to you, um, it doesn't mean you should be nasty back. It just means that you should say, hey, you know, I wish you would have had some compassion for me. That's all. Right. Right. I have one more question for you. Sure. And I would, I totally forgot it until you use, you said, um, things have to be on the same frequency for for the, for the things to align. You also, you are also an amateur radio operator. Yes. Uh, Katie two ORJ, (laughs) Kilo Delta two Oscar Romeo Juliet. I'm actually got my, my tech light. I have my general license now. I have my tech and I have my general and I'm going to my extra. Oh, okay. Oh, you got the general. The, so do you, do you have a, sorry, I'm going to geek out for a moment. Sure. Cause, uh, um, cause I am a Kilo India zero, zero Romeo Delta hotel. So. Oh, wow. I just bought a brand new, so I had the one they gave me. I just brought the new TXT radio and okay. I've got my digital ID and I didn't start using it yet. And I'm in oh, the nice. process of transferring, um, cause you don't really learn radios until you program them yourself. Like Pretty the much. PL tones, the the yeah. the tone that allows and the tone that allows on the receive and the squelch. So you don't learn that until you actually do it. And uh, right. that's an amazing, amazing thing, uh, radio world. Very. I got my um. Well, here's my here's my little my my one mic there that's ha- that's connected to my uh, Yesu. Um, wow. Nine ninety one A here. So. And do you do do you do field day? I have not. I have never done it. CQ field but, day. Uh, CQ field day. CQ field day. If anyone's out there, CQ field day. Calling CQ field day. <laughs> right there, you go. I just I you had said that in 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 a in a video, and I just thought, oh, I got to bring it up. I yeah, I have one last... video out telling people why they should actually get yes. their um why they should get their ham license. But there's a gentleman, I'm trying to remember his name now, <coughs> he is uh, known in the ham world. I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, but anyway, I, I sent a um, – they call him QCs, you know, when you um, – um, what's his, I think his name is Gordon. It will come to me in a second. Gordon uh, Gordon West. Okay. So uh, yes, he has yes. his own school. Wait. So anyway, I uh, – when you do a contact – He's south we, of me. What's that? Really? He's in, Co- he's in Colorado, yeah. I'd love he's to Colorado talk to him. He, he, Q, Springs, so think, yeah. QC – you do a QC, you verify it, you use software. Well, I I reached out to him, and then he told me to send a self uh, address stamped envelope, which was like a a three dollar or two dollars something envelope back to him, so he could send me that okay. and a lot of other sales stuff in there. And sure. he sent me my first CQ back from him on the paper. Oh, I so love it. and when I went to get my digital ID, yeah. which they want to make sure it's valid. I had to log into the state's website. I didn't know the password. I didn't know what mm-hmm. it was. And um, I had to send it to the digital ID people so they could verify to give me a digital ID, which I haven't used yet. Yeah. But it, but it's a lot of fun. And um, just like you know, people are listening to this podcast or the show, when they tune into this frequency, we're here. So abundance is here too. Um, you know, uh, uh, poverty is here too. What frequency are you tuning into? It's a good, uh, that's a good last line. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. What frequency are you tuned into? And it Whoa. starts by you choosing to adopt John's alphabet of gratitude daily. So what that is, is taking the alphabet Saying the letter, like you start the letter A, I'm not going to go through each one, and taking about two things, and not just saying them, but feeling them in your heart. So Mm -hmm. I'm so happy and grateful for the air that I breathe. I'm so happy and grateful for the abundance of everything, of health, of money that I have in my life, and I feel better each day. And you go through the whole alphabet, and I take a little stone that I bought at a store. It was like $12. You want a small – I got a small green stone. I like green. And I would play with the stone as I'm doing this. Sure. And so 
Uh, that's saying the last thing I'll just leave you with is I, I made a promise to myself uh, this year uh, that I want to reach a thousand followers on TikTok so I can start streaming to that platform, which we're working. I think I have about a hundred and sure. 125. So we're working on that. And it's just all about creating. And the other thing I made a promise to myself is to master mindful meditation, which is different than Good regular meditation. Sure. So I am on basically like 30, I'm on 30 some days and I have been doing every day. But I've been recording it, and when I got to day 30th, I said, guys, I'm only going to check in with you. And I do it every day. I'm only going to check in every 10 days. I'm going to get to the month. I'm only going to check in monthly. And I tell you, hey, you know, if you want to follow me on my journey, mindful meditation is something you do every day. And I downloaded this free app called the Insight Timer. I wound up paying for it because they have some advanced features that you can check into. But I, I think it's just, you know, having that uh, mindset that you want to be open like a sponge, that you want to be able to learn. And that yeah. there are people of all different levels and, uh, you know, what you are, uh, what your gender is, what your orientation is. I mean, that doesn't define you as the person. OK, that's that that's a characteristic of you. What defines you as a person is what's in the heart, not even what's up here, what's in the yeah. heart. Right. That's what makes you want to hang around somebody. What difference does it make who they like, who they want to date? That doesn't matter. What matters is the person. I like to hang around John. I like to hang around with Mark. I like to hang around with Sandy. I like to hang around with the person. I wish everybody were just like you because uh, not everybody is. So, well, we are out of time now, John. Um, I do. I want to thank all the listeners. Um, I'm Amethyst Herrick speaking with John C. Morley. Um, I do want to mention to um, go and find John's link tree at believemeachieve.com. And uh, John, thank you so much. All of my gratitude. It was a privilege, a pleasure, and honor to be with you and your wonderful audience uh, this evening. Thanks so much. Namaste. Namaste.